eating a juicy burger is one of the greatest pleasure in life. The key word here is juicy. When you cook a burger with the proper amount of fat on it, it brings juiciness and the right texture. A burger should not be mushy and watery. That's usually what happens with medium rare burgers. The juiciness should come from render fat, not myoglobin. If you are unfamiliar with myoglobin, here's a quick explanation. It is what most people say that your steak is raw whenever you cook a perfect steak and juices comes out of it. That pinkness liquid is myoglobin. With steaks, it's quite different than burgers. Eating medium rare ground beef is not pleasant. Here's proof. This is a mix of 80% lean and 20% fat. To me, it's one of the golden ratio. Another important element whenever you're cooking a burger is to make sure that you have the right size of thickness. That's one of the reasons I love making burger balls. It will keep every burger consistent and take out any variation you might not want. Talking about consistency, there's only one true way to make every burger exactly the same, and that would be to use sous vide. First thing to do is to make the patties. Now this is my burger smasher. I normally use to make smash burgers, and it does the job well, and that's because it has three different thickness with one device. In order to test this properly, I'll be making some thick burgers today. To be specific, about one inch thick. For the seasoning, I'll keep it real simple. A good amount of salt followed by freshly ground black pepper. Once that's done, into the bag they go and they are now ready to be cooked. I'm gonna be cooking two batches. One will be at 135 degrees Fahrenheit, which is medium rare, and it will be cooked for two hours. This will completely pasteurize the meat and make it safe to eat medium rare. The other ones I'll be cooking at at 160 degrees Fahrenheit. And since the temperature is a lot higher, we only needed to do it for one hour. As that was cooking, I went ahead and made a sauce. You can't have a good burger without sauce. And this one, it's quite simple. I combine mayo, ketchup, mustard, and Worcestershire sauce, mix everything well, and that's it. It doesn't get any easier than that. Next up, the buns. You can use whatever buns you like, but one thing that is not negotiable is to make sure that you toast your buns with butter. That will give you the best burger. Talking about that, by this time, the patties were done. Once the time was up, I immediately removed the burgers. And as I'm draining them on a cooling rack, I want you to notice one thing. The one that was cooked at a higher temperature has a lot more juice squeezed out. And that is because the fat was rendered quite a bit. Again, it's what makes a juicy burger good. But just like every sous vide meat, the next thing to do is to put a nice, wonderful sear on them. For that, I went ahead and chose my cast iron griddle. Adding additional fat for the sear is a must. You don't want to sear these burgers for too long because remember, they're fully cooked already. It only takes about 30 seconds for each side because once you're almost done, do not forget to add American cheese. As once that's done, the only thing left to do is to assemble. Like I said previously, I wanted to make this video to prove something to you. That's why I kept this burger extremely simple. The only variation between these burgers is that one is medium rare and the other one is well done. And to see which one most people like, I had a bunch of people give it a try to give their opinion. And the results is absolutely shocking. That is coming up real shortly. Before moving forward, I want to thank today's sponsor, me. Yep, you heard that right. After years of development, testing, and tuning, I now have my very own cooking products available exclusively at Walmart. And trust me, guys, you've never seen anything like this. Check this out. The world's first three-in-one burger smasher. Three different patty thicknesses with just one device. Use only the burger press for an ultra smash burger or slap on the adjustable ring that locks into place for the juiciest burger you ever had. Plus, I also included some parchment paper as well to get you started. Moving on to my ultimate griddle kit. It has everything you need to cook with confidence, including a 10 inch cast iron griddle, which will last you a lifetime and it will store everywhere. Not to mention that it comes with two spatulas, a detachable grill handle to make sure that you never get your hands burned and a locking mechanism where you can attach it to any grill. That's something you've never seen on a griddle. We also have my vacuum seal marinating kit. And if you wanna keep your grill clean, you gotta have a grill brush. Guys, each and every one of these products was designed by me with the intention of delivering top quality products that are worth your money. A lot of work went into these and I know you'll love them. So please check them out at your local Walmart or at walmart.com. Thank you for your ongoing support. It's what makes everything possible to make these videos. But now let's get right back to it. Now both of my burgers are completely done cooking. Most people say that medium rare is gonna be better. It's said that it's gonna be juicy, tender, and delicious. Like I mentioned previously, I disagree. So we're gonna have everyone try the well done burger first. Everyone will be completely blindfolded. I have no time for this, bro. That way they cannot see what they're actually eating. Here's the well done burger. Thank God there's no veggies. Yeah, this is a burger. Mm -hmm. Damn, 
This is a juicy burger. It's like a waterfall of juices. Tastes like a regular Google burger, but way juicier. Holy cow. I was expecting the Google Smash Burger, but this is a thick patty burger. I like it, Google. This is definitely a thicker patty than I'm used to, but the crust is perfect, that sauce is nice, it's cheesy. Me encanta esta hamburguesa, está muy rica. I was a little worried with the blindfold on, but I'm digging this. And it's cooked perfectly, honestly. Just a typical Google Burger. It's good, I can eat the whole thing. I just did. As you can clearly see, everyone enjoyed the well done burger. Says the fat rendered nicely, it was quite tasty. But let's see if the same exact thing is said for the medium rare burger. A lot of people swears by it, and they say this is better. Well, let's find out right now. What? Why does it feel like that? I think it's a little bit softer than what I'd like, honestly. Mm, mm mm. No me gusta. But it's a little bit mushy on the inside for sure. Why? Why, Guga? It's so easy. It's just take like a two more minutes. Let it cook two more minutes, bro. Don't be lazy. This is not medium rare. This is raw. <coughs> oh my God, the texture is so bad. I want a burger, not tartare. This is raw, f dog. Kind of tastes like it's boiled or something. It's kind of gross. I don't want to take another bite of that. This is just like, I don't know, cat food on a bun. I like the other burger better. Give me the other one. Those are the results, everybody. I let every single person give it a try. And I tell you one thing, that well done burger came out on top. I'd love to know your opinion. Let me know in the comments down below if you agree or completely disagree with me. Regardless of the way you like your burgers, burgers are amazing. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Did you put this on a grill?